this video, we're going to take a look at some related rates question, and we're going to look at modeling with circles or spheres. So I've really just separated this into two different videos, one for circles and spheres and one for triangles. There are a lot of different related rates questions that you can do, so you can feel free to look in your textbook for other examples that don't involve circles or triangles. Do please make sure that you've watched this video before you watch 2.6.2. Uh, so that you understand the variable and static values that we're trying to find. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at a question where you have rates that are related to one another. That's why they're called related rates. So you're going to have really two sets of data. You're going to have a set of static data or at a moment in time. And that will typically be something that is measured one time at a moment, so it's not changing, it's at a specific moment, the measurement of this is something. Or this also could be a formula. Oops, so at a moment or a formula. And then you're going to have another set of data that is variable. So this is something that is going to be a rate or something that is changing something with respect to something else, or it's also going to be a derivative because if you'll recall, a derivative is the rate of change of your function or slope of your function. So keeping that in mind, let's read this question and we'll figure out what values we can put down for static and for variable. So a rock is dropped into a pond causing circular ripples. So that just gives me an idea that we're dealing with a circle. So circular ripples. If the radius of the ripple is increasing at one foot per second, so this is a rate. So I know the change in radius dr with respect to time dt is one foot per second. Now anything that happens on either side has to have something that corresponds over here. So if I have the, diff the change in radius with respect to time, over here I'm going to have some value for radius. Then it says, at what rate is the area of the circle increasing? So at what rate, that's a rate, that's a variable. So that means the change in area with respect to time is my unknown which means over here, I'm gonna need an A equals. So at what rate is the area of the circle increasing when the radius reaches four feet? So four feet is a radius at a specific moment in time, four feet. So the only thing I'm missing now is A. What's A? Well, A can be a formula. And in this case, we're dealing with a circle. So A is pi r squared. So that's a great place to start is to figure out all the static values and all the variable values. And now we're going to get started on our actual work. So when we take the work, what we're going to do is we're gonna start with a formula. So in this case, I'm going to start with A equals pi R squared. Now, the reason that we're covering this section now is because we're very fresh in our minds how to do implicit differentiation. And that's all this is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate everything with respect to time. So everything is going to be respect to time. So as I'm taking the derivative, the derivative of a is, so a is just a variable, right? Is just one, but implicitly that's dA over dt because I'm differentiating with respect to time. The derivative of the right-hand side, pi r squared, is two pi, which is a constant, and then r to the first. But again, implicitly then, now I have dr over dt. So implicitly, chain rule, the derivative of radius with respect to time. Now what I'm going to do is replace what I can replace. dA over dt, that's the one I'm trying to solve for. So I'm going to leave that dA over dt. This is two, this is pi. R is 
4 feet, and dr over dt is 1. Let's go ahead and leave our um, labels on there. This is 4 feet, and this is 1 foot per second. Now, it's not mandatory that you leave the labels on there, but it does help when you get to the end of the question, because now as I multiply d over dt, I have 2 times pi times 4 times 1, so that's 8 pi. And then if I'm unsure what the rate or what the units of measure would be, it's feet times feet divided by seconds. So this is square feet per second. So the change in area with respect to time is 8 pi square feet per second. And of course, I would probably write a sentence that said that, but definitely make sure that you are labeling and labeling correctly. So that is the basic idea, is to come up with all of the static and variable values, take the derivative of a formula, plug in what you know, solve for what you want to know. Just as I did on our last question, I'm going to essentially compile a list of static and variable values based on what I read, keeping in mind that anything on the static side should have something corresponding on variable and vice versa. So a balloon is inflating at 4.5 cubic inches per minute. So that's a rate. What is it changing? The balloon is inflating. So what's inflating mean? We're talking about the volume of a balloon. So that's the change in volume with respect to time is 4.5 cubic inches per minute, which means on the left-hand side, I should have a V equals, but we'll come back to that. Find the rate of change of the radius. So rate of change of the radius is what we're trying to find. So the change in radius with respect to time is unknown, which means over here I'll have something to do with radius of the balloon when the radius is two inches. So at a moment in time when the radius is two inches, what is the rate of change of the radius? So the only thing I'm missing is V. And again, V is typically a formula. So we're talking about the volume of a sphere. We're assuming this balloon is going to be a perfect sphere. 4 thirds pi r cubed. Feel free to Google for that formula or there is a great table in your textbook that has a bunch of formulas for area and volume. From here, I'm going to take the static formula. V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And I'm going to differentiate everything with respect to time. So the derivative of V is 1 dV dt. The derivative of 4 thirds pi r cubed means I'm going to take 3 times 4 thirds, which gives me 4, and then pi, and then reduce 3 to 2. But now, again, chain rule says now dr dt. So I've differentiated, differentiated everything with respect to time. Now I plug in what I know. dv over dt is 4.5. I'm not going to put the units of measure on until I get to the end. Um, I still have 4 pi, r is 2, so that's 2 squared, and then dr dt, that's my unknown, that's what I'm solving for. So from here I'm just going to simplify what I can. This side's still 4.5, this side I end up with 16 pi, 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16, and then dr dt. And of course, I want to get dr over dt by itself, so that leaves me with 4.5 divided by 16 pi, and that's an exact result. Um, but typically, we're going to go ahead and find a decimal approximation instead. So using your calculator, you would find that dr over dt is approximately 0 0.09. Now, here's where it might be helpful to have some units of measure. 4.5 was cubic inches per minute and 16 pi, remember we just used inches on R, so this is um, inches, but we squared it. So this is inches squared. And therefore, if I reduce those measurements, my unit is 
inches per minute. So that is the rate because all two of those inches would cancel with two of the inches on the bottom. And so we have inches per minute as our result. So about 0 0.09 inches per minute. Up next, we're going to continue to work with related rates questions, but those questions will all deal with triangles.